Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at cooperative communication and uh, specifically we would like to eventually look at optimization for cooperative communication. All right, uh, so let us continue our discussion on uh, cooperative communication. Okay. So, let us title this as optimization. Okay. For optimization for cooperative communication and uh, what we want to look at more specifically is we want to look at optimization means of op minimization of something we want to look at minimization of the error rate okay and uh, if you have a cooperative communication system what we are looking as uh, what we want to uh, try to find is what is the error rate of this and uh, so this is my cooperative communication system with uh, your source relay and destination nodes and uh, if you uh, in the event of phi that is when you have an error at the relay which means the relay is not able to decode the symbol correctly therefore in selective decode and forward the relay simply does not retransmit okay so the relay to destination link that does not exist because the relay is not uh, if there is an when there is an error at the relay, the relay does not retransmit in selective decode and forward. So only source destination link exists. That is, the destination use, uses only the symbol or the signal received from the source. All right. So in this case, there is only the source destination symbol. So the uh, decoding at the destination takes place on the signal received from the source. Now let us try to model this link. This link can be modeled as the received symbol y corresponding to transmission by the YSD because this is the source destination link equals well square root of P1 and let us assume that the source transmits with power P1 square root of P1 this is the source power times HSD channel we already seen this, this is the flat uh, this is the fading channel coefficient between source and destination times X which is the transmit symbol plus NSD. Let us consider this X to be a BPSK symbol that is this is plus or minus 1. So this HSD is the fading channel coefficient, P1 is the power and X is B, uh, plus or minus 1 which is BPSK or binary phase. shift keying and this n is Gaussian noise with mean 0 and additive white Gaussian noise with mean 0 in variance or power sigma square. And uh, now if you look at this the SNR at the receiver the output SNR this is P1 times magnitude HSD square times x is plus or minus 1. So, magnitude x square is 1 divided this is the power signal power divided by the noise power which is sigma square. I can write this as P1 divided by sigma square times magnitude HD square we have already seen this is equal to beta SD all right and I will further define P1 over sigma square as rho 1. So, I can write this as rho 1 times beta SD. So, this is your SNR. SNR all right at the output all right when the relay is decoding in error. So, there is only so only the source destination link exists that is uh, there is the destination can use only the signal that has been transmitted by the source. Okay. Now, what is the bitter rate? Remember for the for BP since we are considering BPSK modulation the bitter rate has a very simple expression the bitter rate 
is the q function of square root of s n r which is equal to q function of square root of rho 1 times beta s d. And now remember we have beta s d which is a random quantity and we have seen in the previous module that this is exponentially distributed it is average power delta s d square e raised to minus b s d by delta s d square this is the probability density function of beta s d which is the channel gain and distributed exponential and therefore the average bit error rate. So, to find the average bit error rate why do we have to find the average bit error rate uh, remember beta s d that is the gain of the channel co the channel coefficient the fading channel coefficient is a random quantity. So, it is changing from time to time it is varying with time. So, naturally this bit error rate which depends on beta is going to also change from slot to slot or from time to time all right. Uh, and therefore, you want to find what is the average bit error rate corresponding to these observations or these decoded symbols that are decoded symbols decoded symbols at the destination over a long period of time ok. And that average bit error rate is given as well to compute the average of a random quantity you multiply which is our bit error rate q of square root of rho 1 beta s d you multiply it by its probability density function f of beta s d and you integrate ok. So, multiply the prob by the probability density function and integrate over its domain that is from 0 to infinity ok. And uh, here we are going to use the formula for the q function q of x equals 1 over pi integral 0 to pi by 2 e raised to minus x square by 2 sin square theta d theta this is also known as the Craig's formula. And uh, using this uh, this is an alternate you can think of this as an alternative definition of the q function. Normally, the q function is defined as x to infinity 1 over square root of 2 pi e raised to minus x square by 2 dx I am sorry e raised to minus t square by 2 dt that is the tail probability of the standard normal random variable, but this is an alternative definition of the q function which is convenient in this scenario. So, using this I have the average bit error rate is well I will replace the expression for the q function 1 by pi is a constant 1 over pi. So, I am going to take that out. So, that will give me 0 to pi over 2 e raised to minus x square which in this case is rho 1 beta s d by 2 sin square theta times 1 over delta s d square e power minus beta s d divided by delta s d square d beta s d. So, I am integrating the beta over it over the probability density function of the random variable beta s d which is the gain of the s d channel. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to interchange the integrals ok. This is this integral is first with respect to of course, this has to be theta. So, there has to be d theta this integral first with respect to theta next with respect to b s d. So, I am interchanging the order. So, first now I am going to make the inner integral with respect to beta s d outer integral with respect to theta. So, this is going to become 1 over pi 0 to pi by 2 0 to infinity and combine the inner terms 1 over delta s d square e raised to minus beta s d divided by delta s d square into 1 plus 
रो वन डेल्टा एस डी स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय टू साइन स्क्वायर थीटा डी बीटा एस एस डी इनटू डी थीटा now if you look at the inner integral just pay attention to the inner integral inner integral is of the form 1 over delta s d square e raised to minus b s d beta s d divided by delta s d square into some constant k times d beta s d integrated from 0 to infinity why is this constant k because remember this k it depends on theta but theta is a constant when you are looking at the inner integral the quantity theta is a constant it's, it is k okay so you can denote this by k and therefore this integral is simply if you evaluate this inner integral this is simply equal to 1 over k where k is what is k 1 plus beta 1 plus I am sorry this is not 1 plus beta beta 1 this is 1 plus rho 1 okay k is 1 plus rho 1 delta s d square divided by 2 sin square theta and therefore, this now reduces to 1 over pi integral 0 to pi over 2 1 over 1 plus rho 1 delta s d square divided by 2 sin square theta d theta. There is a convenient way to evaluate this. Now, observe that if you at high SNR at, at high SNR equal to rho 1 that is when rho 1 is very high 1 plus rho 1 delta S d square divided by this is approximately equal to rho 1 delta s d square divided by. So, I can neglect this 1 all right because when rho 1 becomes high the second term dominates in this sum. So, I can simply approximate this by rho 1 delta s d square over 2 sin square theta which means this integral now approximately becomes 1 over pi. 0 to pi by 2. So, the 1 goes. So, this simply becomes 2 sin square theta divided by rho 1 delta s d square d theta which is well 1 over pi 2 over rho 1 1 over pi uh, 1 over pi 2 over rho 1 delta s d square times integral 0. and integral 0 to pi by 2 sin square theta is easily evaluated that is 1 minus cosine 2, 2 theta divided by 2. So, that is integral of cosine 2 theta obviously between 0 to root of pi by 2 is 0. So, this is 1 over 2 times pi by 2 and if you net if you multiply 1 over pi 2 over rho 1 delta s d square into 1 over 2 pi by 2 the pi terms cancel the 2's cancel and what you have uh, is basically at that point you have 1 over 2 rho 1 delta s d square which is your probability of error given pi. remember this is the quantity that we are talking we were talking about earlier uh, what is this this is the probability of error the probability probability e given phi remember phi is the error at the relay in the event of which there is no relay to destination transmission. So, there is only source destination transmission and this is the probability of error at the destination for decoding the BPSK symbol transmitted by the source given the error at the relay. So, this is probability of a, so describe it in detail probability of error at destination 
in event of okay so this is your probability of e given phi error at destination given phi that is error at now the other thing that we need is the probability of phi similarly probability of phi now what is probability of phi and similarly probability of now what is probability of phi this is error at relay or rather probability of and what is the probability of error at relay remember the source to relay link is also a fading link so i can model this as y of s comma r source power is p1 square root of p1 h of s comma r times x which is the same symbol n of s comma r now what is the snr snr is p1 magnitude hsr square divided by rho sigma square which is nothing but rho 1 beta SR. So, SNR is basically exactly same as that of source destination link with beta SD replaced by beta SR. Remember beta SR is also exponential random variable with average power delta SR square. Okay. So, this recall that this is also exponential with average power this is also exponential with average power delta s square so therefore the, the error rate probability of error is simply 1 over if you look at the earlier expression uh, 1 over 2 rho 1 delta s d square i simply have to replace delta s d square by delta s r square corresponding to the source relay link so this is simply going to be 1 over 2 rho 1 delta s r square i hope this is clear what we are saying is we are simply replacing in the source destination r beta s d with beta s r which is exponential with average power delta s r square all right so in the bitter rate expression one can simply replace delta s d square by delta s r square and you will get the appropriate bitter rate expression for the source relay link okay and uh, therefore this is your probability of phi this is the probability of error this is the probability of error at the relay Okay. So, that is two components remember we have probability of E we want to find out which we have written in terms of probability of E given phi and probability of phi. The next thing that we want to find is the key component which is probability of E given phi bar remember we are talking about if you go all the way back go back to the previous module we have this probability of E error at the destination which we want to find eventually. Now that depends on probability of E given phi, it is approximately probability of E given phi into probability of phi plus probability of E given phi bar. So we have found out probability of E given phi, probability of phi, what needs to be, what remains to be found is probability of E given phi bar. What is probability of E given phi bar? That is the probability of error at destination given that, given phi bar that is no error at relay, that is the relay decodes accurately in which case relay also retransmits. So, probability of E given phi bar, what is this? This is the error at destination given that the relay decodes accurately. So, in this case what happens is if you look at the diagram you have the source 
in this case what happens is your the source relay destination relays decoding accurately so source transmits relay also transmits so destination you have two signals the signal received by the source signal received from this relay now how does the destination decode it naturally the destination has to employ some kind of combining and we already know what is the optimal combining structure so and this is something that i'm going to something that's very interesting shows the broad applicability of the pre optimization principles that we have seen so far you can treat this in fact as a beam forming problem and that is very interesting it's a beam forming with uh, multiple nodes rather than multiple under so in this case the relay retransmits phi bar implies no implies uh, no error at relay remember phi implies error at relay so phi bar implies no error at relay implies uh, relay retransmits because relay remember selective decode and forward relay retransmits only if it's able to decode so relay retransmits so now what happens you have two symbols ysd which you already had square root of p1 hsd x plus nsd now you will have transmission by the relay so y r d equal square root of p2 that is the relay power h r d fading channel coefficient between relay and destination plus n r d okay and uh, so this is the original transmission by source and this is the transmission by the relay and this is the transmission by the relay and now you have these two symbols received at the destination one from the source from the relay now what are you supposed to do obviously you have to combine them in some kind of an optimal fashion and what is the optimal combiner we know what is the optimal combiner the optimal combiner the optimal beam for this is similar to the beam forming problem with multiple receive antennas and we know that the optimal combiner is the maximal ratio combiner all right and therefore if you treat these two received symbols as your receive vector y bar and this as your channel vector h bar and this as your noise vector n bar we already know what is the optimal combiner optimal combiner for this optimal combiner at destination equals the mrc that is a maximal ratio combiner and uh, what is a maximal ratio combiner that is you have your beam former w bar equals sorry h bar divided by norm h bar we know this and what is snr snr is norm h bar square p divided by say, but p is 1 that is our power of x is 1 into 1 divided by sigma square and what is norm h bar square remember norm h bar square is p1 magnitude hsd square plus p2 magnitude hrd square okay you can see h bar h bar is the vector square root of p1 hsd square root of p2 hrd okay so that is norm h bar square equals p1 magnitude hsd square plus p2 <coughs> magnitude hrd square divided by sigma square now we know p1 divided by sigma square is rho 1 so this is rho 1 magnitude hsd square is beta sd plus p2 divided by sigma square is rho 2 magnitude H hrd square is beta rd okay so this is your snr you can see this is a coherent combining combines the snrs corresponding to both the source destination transmission and the relay destination and thereby you are enhancing the reliability this is where 
uh, you get the gain from cooperative communication because you have the signals that are transmitted by two different uh, source one is the source original source and the other is a relay which is acting as a replica of the source. So, that in ha and now you see the cooperative diversity aspect emerging because there is transmission by the source there is transmission by the relay. So, they are cooperating you have two signal copies and that gives diversity in a wireless communication system which leads to a significant decrease in the bit error rate that is what we are going to see all right. And uh, therefore, now again you can follow the same procedure the bit error rate for QPSK will be q of square root of rho 1 beta s d plus rho 2 beta r d you can average this over the probability density function. And it can be shown that the average bit error rate for this which is nothing but your probability of E given phi bar it can be shown I am not going to explicitly show it may be in a different module separate module because it is not necessary for a preliminary discussion this is given as 3 or 4 rho 1 rho 2 delta S d square delta R d square we know what delta R d square is delta R d square is the expected value of average gain of the relay destination link and rho 1 we know already defined rho 1 rho, rho 2 is also similar rho 1 equals p 1 that is source power by sigma square rho 2 equals p 2 by sigma square. Well, what is p 1? p 1 equals source what is p 2? p 2 equals relay power because the source and relay need not transmit with equal power the source power can be very different from the relay power relay can be have very low power depending on the relay relay can have high power or low power uh, and so on and uh, you know and this is where and you can see this is where you have this uh, coherent combining you have this signal copies uh, and uh, you have these two signal copies and this is where you have this cooperative diversity really coming actually if you realize this and diversity is an important principle in wireless communication system which results in a significant decrease in the error rate okay. and uh, therefore, this is your P r of E given phi bar. So, now we have this elegant expression for the probability of error given. Uh, phi bar that is correct decoding at the relay or no error at the relay ok. All right. So, now putting all these components together one can derive the probability of error that is the final expression for the end to this is also known as the end to end error this, that is probability of E ok. And using that now one can come up with the framework for optimal power distribution between the source and relay. that is our ultimate aim. The optimization problem pertains to how to distribute the power optimally between a source and a relay in a wireless communication system which we will deal with in the next module. Thank you very much.